Welcome to another Vodka and Verbals. So, what to uh, rant about today, or tonight? Uh, I'll just finish off my vodka and orange. And have a little top off. My favourite tipple is Smirnoff. Uh, and I worked in, not in mainland Russia, but I worked in uh, Sakhalin Island. And it was cheaper, this is no joke, This was, it was actually cheaper to brush your teeth with vodka in the morning than it was to get water from the fridge in the hotel. No bullshit. Okay, so, uh, yeah, rent tonight. Is it just me or are, are people getting more and more inconsiderate? Am I just getting such an old fart that I see these things? Um, I, I'm going to show you a little clip now. And I have to say, in all honesty, in, in, in Austria, the driving standard is pretty good. I've driven pretty much places around the world, apart from, um, you know, North America, um, some of South America, um, Canada, uh, but pretty much just about everywhere else, all over the Middle East, the Far East, and the drive, standard, the standard driving is pretty ropey, to say the least. Here, it's, it's generally pretty good. People let you in, they don't cut you up, and so on. But I've noticed, uh, and maybe this is because I'm retired now, but I'm, and that's maybe why I've noticed it in all fairness, but how people go into car parks, whether it be in a, whether it be a car park anywhere, basically, it could be a supermarket, whatever, and they, cut, they turn in, and because they're, they're trying to get as maximum amount of space out of the, the drives, you know, backwards and forwards, they'll come in and they'll come in at an angle and they'll sit across the white lines and so the next one that comes in has to sit at an angle or whatever and then it kind of goes on and it would just take two seconds just to reverse up and straighten up and sit in between the two two white lines i mean parallel parking how difficult is that i mean you have to be pretty much of a moron or you just don't give a shit about other people so i'm going to stick this clip in and and let you have a look at it and uh, whether you agree or you don't agree, but it, it's one thing that really boils my piss. I don't know what it is about people in car parks. This is a this is Interspa in Firstenfeld. I mean, look at this car here. Look at the way that's parked. You can't even park. It doesn't show the angle. But that black one was there first. He's parked at an angle. She's come in next to him and got up alongside. So the back arse end of the cars are over the white line. Why the fuck they can't reverse up? and actually sit straight, because then everybody has to sit at an angle. So you can see this one's straight. Same with this one here. Look at the distance between that white line and that car. So it's right on the white line on the other side. God. I don't know if it's OCD. I just, it just annoys the shit out of me that people cannot be asked. Oh, there's no consideration for anybody else. It's sod it. I've parked. Jeez, it pisses me off. It really, really annoys me. Okay, so you've, you've seen the clip. The, the next one, I, I do because I'm, I do classic cars, and in particular I'm doing this XK150, Jaguar XK150 at the moment. You know, the parts are just horrendous. Some of the parts are horrendous for what they are. Um, you know, I understand that this is a, it's, it's almost like a, it's a, it's, a, it's a small market, and it's not massive volume. I understand that, and so they have to make the money from it. I'm pretty sure the people that actually make the stuff because it's not all manufactured by one person or, or one company or five companies. It's manufactured even by individuals that will make parts for them and sell them on. And I'm sure they're not getting anything like this. So the next clip you're going to see is uh, we're now getting down to the nitty gritty. We're now getting down to the last 10% of the car. And as I said, you know, some of the prices of some of the stuff, you just think, how's that possible? So the, have a look at this boot board, which is made of, I think it's probably birch ply, something like that. And it's got three basic hinges on it. Now, obviously, I'm not going to pay this price. I'll make the board myself because it's an internal board that goes over the top of the wheel cover. The ones for the floor, the wooden floor, the birch board in the, in, the, in the front floors, I had to get them, really. I could have made them, but I had to really get those because they're, they're subject to any, any rainwater or debris coming off the ground. Whereas this board is internal, so it's not going to get wet or, or whatever. And at the end of the day, it sits on the top to make the, the cover. And I think the tools actually sit underneath it, the jack and, and a few other bits and pieces. And then you put it down and then you can put your luggage inside. So obviously I'm going to make the board, but have a look at this price and then tell me what you think. So, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to have a look at this. This is price of stuff. 
And this is a, the boot board that goes over the back of the spare wheel, which is made of probably birch, ply, whatever. But it's plywood and the three hinges, right? I mean, nothing to it. Obviously, I'm not going to buy it because of the price. I'll make one. Look at the price. 617 euro for a piece of plywood and three hinges, three basic hinges. Unbelievable. So, you've seen the price. This is, this is just a piece of plywood. I think it's horrendous for, for, for what it is. You know, and there are some items you think, well, yeah, that, you know, they can't sell very many of those, and, you know, that's reasonable. But some stuff, uh, and it isn't just for Jaguars, it's for, you know, I don't know, classic escorts, um, minis. The, I mean, I, you know, the price of mini stuff now is nothing compared to what it is for the Jags or other cars, but it's still exorbitant in, 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 in some ways, and especially with the mini market being quite big. Anyway, I thought I'd have a rant, um, and cheers, I'll have one of those. But, yeah, with what's going on, I guess it's really quite insignificant, I suppose, in a way, what's going on with this Ukraine situation, which is, um, yeah, it's pretty bad. Somebody sent me a WhatsApp the other day, which I thought was, was, was pretty good and pretty near the mark. And uh, it was a picture of Putin sat in a train against the window of the train. And in the reflection of the, of the glass, Hitler's looking at Putin. And I thought, yeah, it's, it's pretty much there. This guy would, was born 120 years too late. He wants to be the Tsar of Russia when it was the USSR. Um, and hopefully at some point somebody will take him out or something will happen. And, and hopefully there won't be, um, you know, an escalation of this because the world really can't afford an escalation of it. And that's the problem. I think what has been shown up here is that, I mean, I, I know from, from being uh, ex-Royal Marines and we were Arctic troops. I was in 4-5 Commando Royal Marines at Arbroath in Scotland. And we were part of the Arctic, uh, we were Arctic troops. So we'd go and... Uh, do exercise in Norway for three, four months every year, <coughs> skiing and, and so on and so forth. And um, so we knew quite a bit about the Russians. Well, certainly, whether it was propaganda or not, I don't know. But that was the Russians then about the, you know eating black bread and 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 the and the food was particularly bad. And and even now today, it's still eighty percent conscripts in in the USSR. And hopefully, this will come to a a peaceful conclusion or oh, peaceful how can you say that when these people are being killed or everywhere on both sides there's no winners in war apart from the undertaker um but anyway the, 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 the bottom line with this my feeling is from a strategy point of view and from putin's point of view i think he wants to build a, a demilitarized zone right around russia's border and and i don't think the ukrainians are going to put up with that but i think he wants like a 50 or 100 mile uh, non-militarized zone before you hit the Russian border. I think that's the minimum they'll get away with and maybe the Ukraine will have to, uh, you know, give into that. I don't know, I don't know the situation is, but hopefully, God forbid, and I don't believe in God, but hopefully it doesn't escalate to any more than that or all of this stuff is not even gonna be worth talking about. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, as I said, it's, it's, verbal, it's vodka and verbals and that's what it is, it's Saturday night. Take care everybody and stay lucky. Bye.